In a roaring stadium of almost gladiatorial intensity, the two competitors face off. Twice a month, cockfighting draws thousands to this arena in eastern Bangkok. With a history in Thailand dating back several centuries, it still has a large following across the country. We all like cockfighting, even women. We don't think it's violence, it's a kind of sport. Fights are divided into 20-minute rounds and can last more than an hour. Breeders tend to their prize roosters much like boxing coaches, calling them down between rounds, smoothing their feathers and even sucking blood from their injuries. In contrast to some other countries, the sharp spurs on the bird's legs are wrapped in fabric to minimise the most serious wounds, and deaths are rare. It's kind of a sport for the chicken's nature, as they would fight with one another anyway. Even when we raise them normally, it's a Thai sport. We have cockfighting and Thai boxing. Away from the bigger stadiums, which are officially licensed, small unregulated bouts are also common. For many, the main attraction is gambling, which is nominally illegal in Thailand. But the government makes an exception for animal sports, so long as they are not deemed to be cruel. We have had cockfighting for a long time. It's our local culture. Different areas have different birds for fighting. That argument holds little sway with animal rights groups, who say cockfighting is outdated and inhumane. We stop slavery, we stop narcotics, we try to stop prostitution. But in Thailand, when we were in the situation of exploiting culture, and that means you can use the word culture to get away with the bad thing that can make a lot of money. Cockfighting is certainly big business. The best birds can sell for tens of thousands of dollars. And with large financial rewards on offer for both breeders and luckier gamblers, it's likely to remain on Thailand's cultural landscape for years to come.